Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Matt Townsend Show. I'm your host, Matt Townsend, your relationship coach, your guide on the side. We do what we can every day on this show to help you and your loved ones grow healthy, happy relationships and life. Uh, Our goal, of course, on the show is to be the handbook for humanity to help you and everybody that is in your life, whether you want them there or not sometimes, we want you to be able to be healthier, happier, learn how to handle them. Every day we tackle a new idea, we tackle some new tools, some solutions, and we try to bring some experts in to give you a chance to get ahead in your life. One little struggling, difficult, opposition, opposing difficulty of your life at a time. That was a lot of words right there. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. It's, uh, I think it's going to be a really good show today. I, I think we've uh, kind of set it up for you. we got a little bit of theater for you. We're going to have a little competition. We're going to bring in a lot of uh, fun stories and an expert on uh, technology and netiquette because heaven knows we need it. Now, here's why I know we need it. Um, so I was walking. Uh, I, I walked into a restroom, and uh, while I was walking in, I, I just thought I was alone in the restroom, and all of a sudden someone says, Hi. And I'm like, hey, well, I didn't know what to say. What do you say? And then the next thing he says, hey, anyway, John, how you doing? Because I'm and he was talking on his phone in the restroom and he was in the stall. And I am sitting there thinking, I feel pretty stupid. Isn't there a rule that you shouldn't be using your phone in the restroom? A, B, isn't there another rule that you shouldn't be saying hi? Um, because it seems to be breaking all of the norms. Have you ever noticed that all this great technology is impacting some of the rules, some of the etiquette, some of the things you grew up, that the things you thought you should never do? I, in fact, I sat in a meeting once, well, a church meeting just recently, and everybody was looking at their cell phones. They were all in church, you know, reading the Bible, reading their scriptures. But you know what? Apparently everyone's reading them on their iPhones and their iPads now. And the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, that is so rude that all these people are texting in the middle of this meeting. Have you noticed that technology is starting to negatively impact us? Is it starting to take a toll on you? Is it starting to take a toll on your family? How do you get your hands around it? How do you increase uh, and maybe create some better rules, some better manners, How do you teach those youngins who, by the way, are probably outpacing all of us, you know, 10 to 1 on the skills of these things? How do you even teach them etiquette when you don't even know how to search your phone or or use the technology fully? That's what we're going to be talking about today. The power, the impact. Now, technology is not all bad, so let's shoot straight with that. There are a lot of really good things you can do with it, obviously, just, you know, the ability to communicate, to connect, to get online. All of that's powerful. But what if I told you that your cell phone could actually save your life someday? Would you believe me? Well, apparently it did in Atlanta. About a year ago, uh, uh, this police officer um, was able to quickly make an arrest after a midtown um, Atlanta nightclub uh, had a a shooting, a drive-by shooting that went down. But the, the shooter apparently fired his gun, and it hit a man in the chest, And when it hit the man in the chest, apparently his cell phone blocked the bullet. So the poor man, ah, the saddest thing about it is that uh, the the man lost his phone, which, you know, could be traumatic for a lot of people. But this valet's life was saved because he simply had a cell phone in his breast pocket and it stopped the bullet. So interestingly, apparently not all technology is bad, especially if it's effectively placed in a way that you can save your life. Um, But then, again, some technology, I'm wondering if we even have a clue how it's supposed to be used or the right way to use it. And then some technology, I think, even makes us look not so good. So what we're going to do now is a chance to let you understand the great talent that we have here on BYU campus, because there are some really powerful actors. And I have involved them. I have hired them at a very, very uh, large expense. We flew them in from two buildings over. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce to you a new segment that will probably last today. And then uh, it will probably never be aired again. But the segment is called Autocorrect Theater. Welcome to Autocorrect Theater with your host, Sir Matthew Townsend. Wow. See, what we try to do is we spare no expense here. 
on uh, Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. We uh, we had that nice voiceover. We're going to do autocorrect theater. We're kind of correcting. It is masterpiece because it is a master and it is a piece. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to two of our favorite actors, Catherine Allen and Thomas Sir Thomas Brinton. And what we're going to do is we are going to do autocorrect. Now, autocorrect is what, Tom? How, how would you explain autocorrect? Basically, when your phone thinks it's smarter than you. I know. And it, it's not. Because I know what I'm saying. I know what I mean when I text No, it. No, your phone knows. It, it knows You better. don't know. It knows what you really so want to say. So this is when you're texting a note, and you've written whatever, Thomas, and it says, rombalong dong dong Yep. And and then it That's sends common. it out there. <laughs> is that pretty common? And then all of a sudden, you've just sent a message out that is seriously embarrassing because either you don't know what you're talking about or it's invented a whole new meaning. So we're going to have Catherine and Tom run through some of our favorite autocorrect issues. Did you eat dinner? Yeah, I just had a little seizure. A seizure? Answer your phone. Hello? Are you th- okay? What happened? You need to call a doctor ASAP. Mom, I meant Little Caesar, the pizza. I'm not dying. Buy a new phone. By the way, can I just interject? Can I interject in the theater? It's rude, but uh, it's your show. So it sure. is my so, so I guess I will. You're having a seizure. Can you imagine what the mom's doing? She's, She's freaking, freaking out. out. Yes. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I just had to say that because I think that's funny. I, I probably won't interrupt you till next time. Yay, he's going to ask me out tomorrow. I can't wait. I hope he dies. What? Oh, I meant to say I hope he does, but it came out dies. I'm not jealous. No more chocolate. I'm going to be 300 pounds. I just went for a two-hour run to justify that baby I ate today. No, I meant bunny, not baby. Chocolate bunny. You ate a baby? Oh, sorry. I have to clean my tomb. I'm room. Because you're dead. Uh, my phone literally has a mint of its own. Oh, I mean mind. Mullets in space and treasure Islam were two of my favorites as a kid. I hope you met Muppets in space and treasure island. Otherwise, I'm completely on a different page. <laughs> Stop at the store on your way home, please. We need red sauce and frowned beef. I just pictured a very sad bovine. Otherwise, we'll do. What? Why? Frowned beef. Autocorrect strikes again. Please, I'm so not wasting my time or money going to a grocery store to buy a lotto toilet. Ticket. What's a lotto toilet? I want one. Will you go to prom with me? Oh my gosh, yes! Oh, sorry, wrong person. And here's here's the final. The pièce de résistance. Yes, this is the uh, finale. It goes something like this. I'm making chili tonight. Maybe they can bring sodas and griots? Uh, frites? Frigid? Doritos? Frigid? Fruits? Fritos. Oh, autocorrect. Fritos it is. <laughs> Oh, my heavens. Seriously messed up. But you know what? This doesn't happen to you guys, does it? No, I don't have an iPhone. Is this why you're single? (laughs) Uh, How does that work? I don't know. But see, okay. Great segue. And you know what? If we had an applause-o-meter, we would probably use it right. Not an a-meter. Just an applause button because no one seems to be cheering. But I think I'll give you a hands up and cheers on that. Thanks to Catherine and Tom. They they are our actors and... um, Go get outside. We've got a donut for you. Excellent. You'll have to, to share. just put Yummy. some money. Yeah, just split it. We're trying to cut back. So if you notice, isn't it interesting? These things are supposed to be helping us, right? And instead, you have to say Fritos, or no, what was it? Yeah, Fritos about 20 times in 20 different ways. How do you get through all this technology? How do you take our technology and make it our our servant not our master. How do we use the technology to strengthen the people around us, the relationships? How do we not let all of this interference, all of this junk, the stuff that just can kind of naturally come over the technology? I mean, think of it. How many more things now can we access and bring into our home and our teenagers can bring them in and our, and our, and our children now? I have children that all have iPads and iTouches. And nowadays, 
they're learning stuff. I mean, we'll sit in the car on a family trip, and now we can drive all the way to California, and my kids don't even fight. They don't even talk. They just kind of look at each other, and if they want to pass a comment, well, you know how we used to do it in pig Latin or whatever? Now they don't even need pig Latin. Now they just text it on their eye touches and their iPhones, I mean, and we and mom and dad are just none the wiser. When we come back from this break, we are going to be meeting with a guest. Uh, um, her name is Becca Delgarian, an incredible woman, runs a blog, and is just really excellent at understanding netiquette, technology, how to take it to the next level, how to start to notice what's maybe not appropriate, And hopefully we can help you create better standards, maybe a little higher standards on how we treat each other with our Internet activity. You're listening to The Matt Townsend Show right here on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. Welcome back, everybody, to The Matt Townsend Show right here on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. And today we're talking about netiquette and pretty much all technology kit. I just made up a word there. But what we're trying to figure out is how do we use our technology to build, to lift, to enhance our lives instead of kind of ticking people off, making them frustrated with this and taking us to the, you know, to the another deeper level of enmity and frustration. That's what we're trying to figure out on the show today. And as part of that, one of the things I wanted to introduce, it's a term you may not even have heard of. There's a thing called trolling. Have you ever heard of that? Now, trolling is where people go out. They can do it on the Internet. They can do it on message boards. They can do it on Facebook. And these people go out, and they just kind of throw out a grenade, basically. They say either something really offensive, and then they watch everybody react to it. And it just kind of blows up a site for a while. They might go out and say something really political or something, you know, really inappropriate, and, and it, it ruins things. Well, there's a story of, um, the, of a woman, a teenage girl from Arizona who had died. She had, she had passed away. And so what happens on Facebook when, when you pass away is sometimes they'll leave their site up for a while so that people can leave, you know, some, it's a memorial site. They can leave their memories. It's just some, some good feeling thoughts and stuff. Well, some of these trolls went on and put some offensive comments on the site and literally ended up blowing up this site. So a year after their daughter had died, the parents now have to deal with all of these negative comments about their daughter. So let's listen to a, um, a, a brief kind of a overview of this and, um, and hear a little bit more about the topic. So the term troll may be new to you, and if so, the term rickroll certainly must be. Now, you may have been its victim and not even know it. Say you were searching YouTube for a big news story, find one with a really interesting title like Occupy Wall Street Gets Pamper Sprayed, and you think, oh, so you click on it, and... And up pops a music video of 80s music star Rick Astley. For the video's uploader and the thousands of copycats who also wanted to be trolls, I'm sure your irritated comments below the video make it all worth their while. But now that same kind of attempt at humor is spreading from your digital reaction to your real-life reaction. You ever heard of coning? I had never heard of that term until today, but a troller in real life orders an ice cream in the drive-thru. When they pull up to the window and they hand the ice cream out to him, they grab it upside down. Oh, oh, (laughs) sorry. Grab the wrong side. That's right. Grab the ice cream and then kind of turn it upside down and start eating the cone. What? (laughs) Makes a really big mess. No. And the idea is spreading so virally... Store managers are starting to catch on. If you're going to try to grab it from the ice cream, I can just throw these away. I've seen this stuff before. (laughs) But in the world of Internet One upmanship, the trolls are getting nastier and nastier. New videos show a drive through clerk handing a troller a large soft drink, which they then throw right back at him. Have a good night. (laughs) And speed off. They call it fire in the hole. In the civilized world, we call it assault. So while real-life trolling with, say, Walmart announcements is a generally innocent trend, videos like this one, which show teens destroying the inside of a store, well, they're not so innocent. That's uh, Rob Sanders uh, reporting that. Now, isn't... Isn't that interesting? So now all of a sudden, we used to just kind of keep our pranks to ourselves, and then you were pretty much left up to, 
your own head, your own thinking to somehow as a teenager throw together something to do. Nowadays, apparently, we can just go on YouTube and can start finding a myriad of wonderful ideas for how to drive people crazy, how to get police involved, and uh, not necessarily good. And I'm pretty sure that's not the ideal use of the Internet. We're going to go now to Becca Dulgarian. She likes to be called the queen of the website. No, she doesn't. She's a blogger. She's a crafter. She has a website. The website's Blue Cricket Designs, and she is incredible. She's from Huntington Beach, grew up in Huntington Beach, not a surfer. No. But how did you get online then? <laughs> oh I'm gosh. just kidding. Yeah. Where's the sound effect? I know. Boom. Boom. No, but seriously. Um, but she's she's really talented and um, knows a lot about the internet, and so we're going to kind of lean on her heavy. Now, one of the things I wanted to do before I, I get I want to I want them to know who you are. So we got something off your blog, Uh-oh. and I'm going to read it. Okay, I am one part wife. This is so cute, bloggery. Aww. Is this is that a word? I like making up words if you haven't noticed. Three parts mother, and the rest is a mixed bag of genetic obligations, sass, and reality. I hit the jackpot, she says, when it came to my matrimonial mate. I married my high school sweetheart. Aww. Aww, That's cute. I married my high school sweetheart. I know. It's fun, huh? It's beautiful. Yeah. I'd highly recommend it. Yeah. Then you don't have anything, you know, new. (laughs) Anyway. But I really did. And it's great. It really is good because all of our friends are the same. They are in like our reunions coming up in five years. Yeah, that I think I have to organize. Do you? Which of course, is a little you do. scary. Well, because you're organized, and we have all the same kind of expectations. Yeah, we do too. Except, um, I. It's interesting. My wife actually has friends from high school, and you don't. <laughs> don't know why. Anyway, I think they're rude. So, Becca, fill us in because this life shouldn't be this. Um, people are getting rude. Very. With technology. Is it just that we're clueless or have we not like laid out the rules? What is it? I think we just have one more platform to be rude. It's it's just a new platform. It's just a new manifestation of the human yeah. being. You're your worst person in any department of your life. And now we have the internet and now yes. we have all this technology to just offend. Yikes. That's kind of gave me the chills. But I, but I am not an offensive person. No. So my true self is very... It's exciting and, and nice and rainbows and butterflies uh-huh. online. And um, unicorns. And um, we got to find our Homer Simpson clip because that was huge yesterday. So tell me, uh, what, what do you, what's your take on it? So a part of this is just the manifestation of who we are. It's now just coming out in another way. How, like, because like, we've got now phones that can be offensive. We have iPads. We have email. Blogs. Blogs. Texting, yes. messaging. There's so many things we can do with it. Yeah, well, and I think you touched on it earlier. It's just we don't know what to do. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. Yeah. We're going to fix. We got to talk about it. I'm sick of it. I I kind of think it's kind of funny. I but, do too. I wasn't really. But you're mad. right. We really really need to fix this. But it, like, so let's talk about it. What? Okay. If we had to like uh, had the magic wand, what would we want to fix? Where would we start? Because I'd start with the bathroom guy. Oh, using yeah. his bathroom in there and then talking, but then me thinking he's talking to me. I'd start there because that embarrassed me. Yeah. Where would you start? Mm, I, I think we've got to start on Facebook because okay. everyone's on Facebook. Yeah. My 88-year-old neighbor just told me he's on Facebook. Is he really? What's yeah. he doing? I don't know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to look him up. I don't know if he'll be my friend. To try it. I should try. I so should. we do have to start on Facebook. What, okay. So. Uh, what about Facebook? Because to me, I, I again, I'm not. I don't quite get Facebook. I mean, I don't get this stalking thing that people do when they follow you. Like oh. my daughter, I'm not going to name names, but her name is Sarah Townsend. She's a freshman at Brigham Young University, but she's a great gal. And but she actually finds the guy she wants, and then she just um, creeps on him. I think they call it, and she just creeps around, and just learns about him, finds out about him, finds common friends, and then she lines up a date. Now, is that wrong? You know what? I don't know. I didn't date during the Facebook era. I know. But I will say I hooked somebody up on Facebook once. Did and you really? I said, check him out on Facebook first and let's see if it's worth it. And then they went and befriended somebody? Yeah. You can kind of like see what they look like. And you can check out all their pictures. Yeah. So that's called so I creeping. Don't know. I, guess, I guess that's called creeping. And it's, it's creepy for I, a reason. Yeah. That's where so the word comes from. That's one way. <laughs> That's one way to get a date. Oh. Um, what, what other things do you see going on with Facebook and some of the other technologies? Okay. 
I asked this on my readership on my fan yeah. page, and let's talk about the Facebook no-nos. Yes, let's hear those. First of all, I'd like to um, congratulate you because I don't know what you had for breakfast. I don't think I had breakfast. Because you didn't post it on Facebook. What? That's a big offense. I hate that. Everyone hates I don't want to hear about what you ate for no breakfast. No one wants to know what you're doing 24 hours a day, no, right? No, seriously. Isn't that what Twitter's for? We'll, we'll talk, we'll talk <laughs> okay. about that next. Because I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, people really are not interested. I, I don't know. Maybe your grandma is. Maybe my neighbor would be. Love him. Um, he might be interested in what? He might be. Yeah. But like, you know, on the way to the grocery store. That's, oh, that's, at a stoplight. That's awesome. Oops, spilled my drink. I had a good suggestion though. A reader said, "I don't need to know what you're that you're going to the grocery store, but if you find a fantastic sale, let me know about it." Interesting. You know? So we could use it to increase marketability for companies. Yeah. But we don't necessarily want to do it to hear about your breakfast. Yeah, sale on ketchup, go yeah. stock up. Mowing the lawn. <laughs> Mowing the lawn. Yeah, so people are kind of uh, not really interested in everything you're doing mm -mm. on Facebook, so you don't need to status update maybe. I don't really know what the magic number is. Is it three updates a I day? I think it's three. Three? That feels good to me. Yeah, I kind of like three. It's also interesting that you're you're only supposed to have so many friends. I've read oh, studies about ooh. that because if you have too many friends, then you have to deal with everybody's yeah, Matt, fakery. I did a Facebook cleanse a few months ago, and I cut 400 <gasps> people. I didn't did even know, you know I it? knew 400 people. Wow. Did they know they were cut? I hope not. You know what? My sister emailed me. They'll find me. out. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. They have changed a lot on Facebook, and my sister emailed me and was like, why did you do that? Just today they announced that they will now be sending out notifications if you get the X. Oh, of oh. all days. See, I, I got super lucky. Did you make it? I did. I did it Because I was before. wondering why I, why I was no longer on yours. That was just weird. I don't know. But like you said, like you don't want to be bombarded in everybody's breakfast menus. Yeah. So you got to kind of cut the fat. Yeah. I had a lot of business contacts in my personal page, and I didn't really want everybody to know certain things i don't know okay yeah you're good shall we move on no so no yeah in fact i guess we have to move on we got about one minute but um i think the number was 350 and oh, what they were saying in the sweet study spot. that's the sweet spot for you, yeah because then all of a sudden you get too many um like what do they call them news updates like uh, what do they call them status yeah, updates. status updates so then all of a sudden all these status updates keep telling you how great everyone else is <laughs> See, that's one thing I don't want on Facebook is I don't want to hear that your kid's a 4 -0, okay? I just don't, okay? Just because mine aren't, hey, yeah. not doesn't make me bad. It's I don't a want brag to hear board. Them. It's a brag board. Yeah. So not... how do you, yeah. When we come back from the break, we're going to go down a list, and we're going to start blowing some of this stuff up. Uh -oh. Twitter, that's where we do our food updates. Okay. Right? <laughs> Facebook, three a day, no more than 350 friends. See, if they had just turned it over to us, we'd have this fixed yeah. by now. This is going to blow people's minds. It's going to blow people's minds, and it's going to save them a lot of stress. That's why we're here, folks, on the Matt Townsend Show. Join us after this break on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. Welcome back, everybody, to the Matt Townsend Show right here on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. And guess what? We're back, and we are learning tech netiquette, doc tick, <laughs> internetiket. <laughs> Make up one more word. I can't. I love making up words because it just makes me feel smart. Is it out of the box? It's out of the box. <laughs> so what we're talking about today, folks? Uh, how do you? How do we educate the world on proper etiquette? What are the do's, the don'ts? What should we be doing on the Internet? What just should we not be doing on the Internet or any technology for that matter? Cell phones, people don't know what they're doing. There, there's all these stories out about all the germs that are on these phones. There's stories about, um, you know, people, you know, that are getting beat up because of it, people that are committing suicide because of stuff that's been said on the Internet. What are some of the rules? We're joined by our guest, Becca Dulgarian. She's a blogger. She's a she's an incredible talent. She is from Huntington Beach, California, has never surfed. And we don't understand it, but she's with us today. She is a blogger, crafter, wow. has a website, Blue Cricket Designs. It's Blue Cricket Design. Oh, thank you. Okay. Dot and net. she corrects people really bad. <laughs> um, so, blue cricket, www.bluecricketdesign.net. 
Thank so you. go check her out there. Now tell us what are your ideas? What what are the rules? What are the what are the things we've got to make sure we're doing? Okay. Or not doing. Let's finish up on Facebook real yes. quick. Okay. We talked about the friends amount. Yep. Uh, how often you should be leaving com- leaving status updates. Yep. Excuse me. Um, also, don't tell people that you're alone. <laughs> oh, like do people my do husband's that? going out of town. You know. Oh yeah. I'm sitting all by myself. The windows are all open. The back door is swinging in the wind. Okay, maybe this is more of a safety, like, yeah, you know, safety just alert. Seems crazy. But also, yeah. Or it's like, yeah. 10 more days till I go to Hawaii. That's right. Mom and dad are out of town, left the kids under 15. Yeah, nine more days till I'm going to Hawaii. Isn't like, that true? Wow, you're going to Hawaii. I get it. Yeah. Stop. We get it. Bring you're me home special. a pineapple and you're don't talk about You're very, very special, and your husband provides. Okay. So that could be taken as as an offense yeah, exactly. by somebody who has never been to Hawaii, me. <laughs> anyway. Well, it wouldn't matter because all you do is surf there. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, keep going. Oh. You're good. We're all friends. So, yeah, that's our Facebook thing. Also, um, if you have, like, there's so many people that have, like, a business page and, like, their personal page. Mm-hmm. And when you're on your, like, your business page and other people are on there and then they're like, wow, come check out my business page. Yeah. It's kind because of, they because they might notice that you have you know Matt has yeah. like twenty million fans it's, or something. It's ten million. Yeah, so he's got ten million fans, and I'm like a tiny little you just want, relationship expert, yeah. quote unquote. Yeah, you and want I want to grab his audience. Yeah, so I'm going to jump on his site and I'm going to steal all his fans. Oh, interesting. So the minute people yeah. are kind of using it inappropriately, as a billboard uh-huh. for their for themselves. And I've actually noticed that, like when I post stuff on my business stuff, like I have a business or a fan page which seems weird I know. and then i have just a personal page but on my fan page if i use it too much to like promote i get nothing oh but if i give away good stories or good gifts or you're good at quotes yeah I'm okay a here's quoter. the here's this here's the the sweet spot for like a business page you got to ask questions and start conversation yeah that's, that's what this is for see that's yeah. where we should be using it yeah. is to increase our social ability our relationships connectability stuff like that yeah, I ask a lot of questions. I like that. And they might feel a little stupid, but I get to know my, my readers and yeah. my fans, and that's an appropriate Facebook Totally agree. activity. Good. Okay. What other so ideas? So let's talk about cell phones. Oh, I love them. You do, huh? Yeah. yeah. I use mine all the time. Okay, I need to kind of you fill you rain, in on the fact You're going to rein me in? Oh, no. What? I'm going to throw myself under the bus. Yeah, I know this. I don't own a cell phone. Shocking, I know. Now, had we known this? I know. I would not have been invited. You would not be here right now. Oh, shoot. How do you not own a cell phone? I, I don't. I just don't feel that. I don't feel like I need one. Well, how can you drive with your knee if you don't have your hand, your phone in your hand? I drive at 10 and 2 o'clock. Oh, you do? You put your hands there? Or is that the only time you drive? It's 10 and oh, 2. Oh, no. I drive with my hands on the wheel. At 10 and 2. At 10 and 2. <laughs> I was going to say, because if you're only leaving at 10 and 2, you don't get out much. No, and I, I wouldn't need a cell phone. See... To me, that's strange. I know, and that's the thing. It doesn't bother me, but it bothers everybody else. It's because so, you're not as cool as we are. No, but I also think it leads to like super sensitivity to cell phone use on my part. Like I'm uh, super annoyed at bad etiquette when it oh, comes okay, to cell good. phones. Okay, good. Okay, so what do you so see I have with a cell list, phones? But people are going to hate me for this. But you know what? I'm going to own it. Okay, own I'm it. Totally going to own it. Doesn't matter that you're backwards and you don't have one. Just tell us what you think. Loud conversations <gasps> in public. I don't like that either. Inappropriate. Yeah, totally agree. Just at the gym, getting on my bike, you know, getting my bike on, and like yeah, the chick next it. to me was like she had her iPad, she was reading a novel, she was on her cell phone talking to her friend. And you could hear the Dude, whole thing. Dude, I can hear the whole thing, and she's talking about an incision. Oh, uh, yeah, we I don't want to do that. I didn't that. want to. I mean, I wish the bike was not... You know, stationary. I wanted to ride <laughs> away like to just and kick not it off hear the stand that. And see her drive yeah, away. loud conversations. That'd be great. Um, another thing, like when I'm in line, and I see somebody on their cell phone, and they they stand in line and they get all the way up to the check stand mm-hmm. and they never get off. Yeah. And the poor Move clerk it. who's who's making like minimum wage, who who like lives for some sort of personal interaction. Inter- I know. Gets nothing, and then they, there's no thank you, and See, they walk that's away. that's huge. Oh. That's where I think we're going to pay for this, is because I don't think we have a clue what we're creating, like in our youth. Oh, they're that, clueless. That just can only I'm text so to each other. I mean, really, it's a big deal. And I think in about 60 years, we'll just have a bunch of people. What was that show called where they where they were all gained weight, and they grew old, and it was in the space? <laughs> it was a cartoon. And they rode around on little jazzies. 
because they were all so overweight and no one was interacting. There was a really cool show. It's It was a Disney show. I believe it was the Disney Pixar film Wally. Yes. Do you remember <laughs> Wally? I thought it was. I think boring. that's going to happen. I'm dead serious. That is messed up because my kids can literally, they can drive to California. I've already said this. And nobody has to talk. It's messed up. Yeah, we don't have. <clears throat> Excuse me. We don't have DVD players in the car either. Don't you? Do, do you guys so, have a car? I drag my feet. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I pump my feet to get my car to move like the Flintstones. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I was like... No, I really do. I drag my feet when it comes to technology. That's A little bit. And I just feel like it's. I, I'm a happy person without yeah. it. Well, that, well, by the way, that's what makes you a good guest is because you're seeing it from a different angle. Everyone else would defend it, but you get, I mean, you get its value because you but, have a blog. Okay, but listen, this might come off a little weird. I think having a phone is like having a kid. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't even know how awesome it is until you have one. Oh, don't, for don't sure. Don't you think? Oh, for sure. Like, you know how everyone's kids are so annoying when, mm-hmm. you're, when you're single and when you're just like, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, I, you know, when you've got your you own have one, and you're tucking and it in bed these, every night. Yeah. And they do all these amazing tricks no like take pictures. I know. And Texting. You can, you can send magical messages over the over space. I can read a book on my cell phone. That's amazing. In fact, I listen to a tape so all I don't the way knock to the show. Them. I do not knock them. You, you'll I like them. I just don't have one. It's well, like, someday you'll have one. Someday I will have you one. You will. Don't give up. Don't give up the dream. I, I'm avoiding it. But I don't know. I kind of. So like I said, I'm super kind of sensitive to yeah. like. Cell phone etiquette. So again, let's get give back me some to more of those. What we don't like. Um, do you have people that over text you? Oh yeah. Or that instead of saying "on my way," mm-hmm. they might ask, "How has your day been?" Yeah. And you're like, "Oh wait, this kind of is appropriate for an email, not a yeah. text." No, exactly. You know what you do? It's very simple. It's like a baby. You just ignore it. You just <laughs> back don't, to the kid you analogy. Just, you just ignore it because I I don't answer texts unless I really can because I'm not going to answer when I'm driving. Oh, that would good kill for me. you. Thank you. Well, I'm eating. I almost died. So when you're eating, you can't eat and text while you're driving. So I like to, I'd rather eat. Okay. You with me? I am. What Come else? On. Let's talk about the driving while oh, on the phone. Oh, that's bad. Okay. Well, maybe, I don't know how long ago, five, ten years ago, you can get a cell phone and make a phone call. Mm-hmm. Now you can buy a cell phone and text on it. And that's like a whole different uh, like skill Why? set. Yeah. To be able to text and drive. Right. Actually, I think it should be illegal everywhere. I think it is, actually. Well, it's isn't not it? enforced. Isn't it? Not in Huntington. Can I tell you a story? Why do you keep talking about I don't about know, because I just Beach? can't get over the fact that you grew up there and you don't surf. Anyway, oh. just keep going. No offense. Okay. Um, I was on the freeway, freeway with my precious cargo. Mm-hmm. I had children in the car. And this lady was driving this huge truck, and she was texting. Uh. And every time she'd like look at the street and then look at her hand and text... And then she would like Kurt. Like oh, yeah, she like, came into my into lane, lane, and I had to swerve to avoid her. And I, and you know, count my blessings. There was no car next to me, but I literally almost caused or See. was part of a, a, a uh-huh. huge accident. I was so irate about it. Did you text again? Her? Super sensitive about. Well, cell that's phone. not even. That's just normal. You almost died. I almost died. So what did I do, Matt? You, I bet you pulled out. A gun. No, I didn't. <laughs> what did you do? Who do you think I am? No. You pulled it. You I, ran I did do something that I would not recommend what? doing. What? I followed, followed her. her. Oh, yeah. You don't do that. I know. That'll get you killed. But she was a mom. Like, I could tell she was a mom, too. See, if you had a cell phone, you could have called. Yeah. I, so I, I would have just called the police. I f- are you right. I could have called. I need to put that down on my Next pros time, list. Next time, call me. Get and a I'll cell call phone. Them. I can't call you. Pull over. Ask someone for a phone. Call yeah. me. I'll call them. You're right. I should do that. But I did. I followed her for like four miles. What if she was bad news? Instead of just like la la la. I know. I was, in was... A, I was in a bad place, I think, during that time of my life. Okay, but you got it. So I okay. drove. I drove. I pulled her over. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I just have to tell you that you're texting and you're driving is really dangerous. You almost caused an accident. And she's like, oh. My bad. Really? Because I I I really try really I didn't hard even notice it. to drive super safe when I'm on my cell phone. I'm like, well, you're not. I was nice. I didn't say it like Did that. Did you just shake said, hands and walk I said, away? Oh, well, I think you might need to reevaluate that. I don't know. She apologized Good times. and I moved on with my. Are life, you guys friends? Don't do I bet that. you guys are friends now on Facebook. Yeah, now we're friends on Facebook. But I actually cut her. Did on you my cut? Cleanse. She was just kidding. <laughs> she was one on your cleanse. Okay, one more. What's your overall tip for etiquette? Netiquette. Say nice things, and if you have something bad to say, don't say it at all. Hold back. I mean, really. Seriously, and it's like, don't say something 
to somebody that you would not say to their face. Yeah. But see, that's because there's this permanency to everything nowadays. All the stuff online, all the stuff, it's permanent. So yeah. whatever you're saying, you're putting it out there for more people than ever. True. And you're, and it's not going away. Just think before you do something. Etiquette is out there to make the other person more comfortable. That's it's exactly not to right. make you comfortable. That's right. It's to make somebody else more comfortable. Mm-hmm. So think, if I say this, what's it going to do? If I'm texting on my phone while I'm driving, what is that going to do to somebody else? That's right. See? It, it's, it, it really just comes down to... You know, golden rule. Yeah. Treat everybody like a brother and a sister. Treat them like they're your friend. They don't have to be your friend online, but treat them as if they're your sister, they're your brother. Becca Delgarian, you nailed it. See how easy that is? Mm. And we won't even bring up Huntington Beach ever again. (laughs) But she's a blogger. Have you been there? Twice. Twice. I spent a night there one week. (laughs) Anyway, bluecricketdesign.net. Check out uh, Becca Delgari, and she's got great stuff there. She's a wonderful being, and if you see a lady driving down the road without a cell phone, flapping her arms at you, it probably (laughs) means you cut her off, and she doesn't have any way to communicate with you. Thanks, Becca. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back after this break, folks, right here on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio. everybody to the Matt Townsend show. Thanks uh, for joining us this hour. Of course, on this show, we try to give you some tools, some ideas for how to, to take your life, I think, to the next level. We want you to live a smart life, right? We don't want you to just be lived and, and come, you know, at the end of our lives, sit there and say, what the heck? Why did I miss so many opportunities? Our job on the show is to show you what maybe you, you're passing up and some really cool opportunities. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, – we are located – this is um, BYU Radio. So we're located on the campus of Brigham Young University. And on that campus uh, at, the, at the radio station here, we have some older people, you know, more, more seasoned, I like to say, uh, um, just rich – in flavor. And then we have some young bucks, uh, these college students that are around here. And they, they like to think they know a lot about technology. And so uh, we're going to have uh, Bryce Tobin join us, right? And um, Don Shaline's going to be with us today. Which one's the old one? That, Don, you sound like you're younger and vibrant. Could very well be. You no, Bryce, you... snappers. Okay, there he is. Is that better? So I'm, I'm not even going to tell you who's the older one, but I will tell you that Bryce is the younger one. And he's not even that young. He's only, he's 16. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <Ish>. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to try to play Stump the Old People. I don't, what are we going to call this? Do we have a name know. yet? It's no, just, we what we're going to try to do is see if Bryce can like stump us with new innovations, technology, things that are out and about today, and see if he can tell us something we don't already know. And then we're going to turn it on him. And we're going to have a flashback to, I don't know how far back you're going to go, Don. We'll see. Fifth, it's going to be 70s? tough for these guys. Yeah. We have to go back to yeah. the 1800s. <laughs> yeah, the, the printing press. Yeah. <laughs> the cotton gin. Movable type. Okay, Bryce, what's your, uh, what, what do you want to try to stump us on? Okay, I'm going to start with a name and I'll start, well, I don't know how I'm going to stump you, but this will be You funny. may not be able to. We'll see. Right? I'm still trapped. So this is the Sony HMZ T1 3D TV headset. Okay? Huh? What this does. Yes. It goes on your head. It fits over your head. Yes. Very Tron-like. Tron-ish. Okay. Um, and it has two uh, <laughs> has two screens. Why? Uh, for the 3D effects. Yeah, so why would you want this? Uh, hold on, I will tell you okay. why. <laughs> it you just seems silly. <laughs> I will tell you why you will want. Why this. I want it? Okay, it's got 720p OLED screens. That, uh, that sounds bad. It's it's okay. Well, you're killing me here. Okay, keep going. Um, <laughs> it's got two screens that uh, can move in or out depending on how far apart your eyes are. That's helpful. Wow. So, however inbred you are, yeah. uh, it's made for you. Okay. <laughs> well, couldn't you? Okay, I'm not so, a mess. Keep going. It, with your... uh, it has uh, 5.1 surround sound in a headset, so you can okay. hear what's going on behind you while it's yeah. sitting while this like eight pound machine is sitting on your. I head. don't get it. Dumb. It's also eight hundred dollars. I know, Sound any don't. better? No. No. Because you know what? What? You're alone. You're still Actually, alone. I think that's the beauty of it. 
I know, but because you're bit. single. You know how bad that would be? Try I'm, to get a I'm family of five liking, under that. I'm, I'm liking the sound and, and the, like concept the sound of, idea. of overall, other than the fact that I think I would end up after about five minutes with a huge headache. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes. And your eyes yes. would be crossed, yeah. and then you'd need yeah. corrective wear. That would be the end of it. you got neck problems. Yeah. Like, well, and try to get your family to wear that. Right. You'd have to pass it around. A it's going to be a fight. They'll fall over. Not, I don't even like it. Okay. Give me another one. Give me one I'll like. Oh, I think we. I think I got the wrong list. If that's what you're looking for. Were you not prepared? No, I was. What prepared. else? Come on, because that. Okay, yeah. Okay, we, how about this? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, these are Bluetooth headphones. Okay, this I yeah. like. Okay, so no cord, no cable, no cord. Okay, so yeah, yeah. cordless. All right, they're these big head, kind of like the ones we have on right now. Yeah, not as big as yours though. Yours are huge. Mine are pretty big. Or is your head really small? Actually, my head's gigantic. Is it okay? So, so it's not that. it should should be dwarfing these headphones, <laughs> but. Uh, so there's several that are out right now. There's Street by Fitty, okay? There's Beats by uh, Dre Studio, or there's Dre Studio headphones. Um, Chambers by RZA. RZA! Yeah, right. And Soul by Ludacris. They're the SL300 So models. these are all hip. These they are, are hip are. phones. These are you can make a hip-hop. statement just by wearing them. Okay. Again. Fitty. So what's the, so so this is this is like the new thing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's they're, they're these. Headphones. Have you ever heard of the Sony Walkman? Uh, I I owned a few actually. Yeah, I yeah. did. You remember in the fact, Walkman? That in was fact, the, best. Uh, the the stoplight on the way out of where I live, there was a guy walking across the street with a Walkman in his hand. <gasps> And he was listening to music. Well, I wanted to go shake his hand. Now, I want to ask you, a Walkman with a CD or a Walkman with a cassette? Yeah. No. I, it's been a long time since I've had the cassette one, but this I was, was a CD. The cassettes CDs were the originals. Yeah. Yes. You remember those, Don? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. That was as popular as IZOD. You IZOD, had to, there we go. You remember? You had to be that cool remember to have a, a Sony Walkman. Yeah. I couldn't even walk with that one. Certainly more. Boring. Did we stump you there, Bryce? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, no. I'm on board. Okay. I'm on board. Give me another one. Give me, give me something that's just going to be something we won't. I will have never. Well, I guess I haven't heard of either of those. But okay, what's something that? Because uh, we're going to stump you, and ours are really better than that. And I don't even know what Don picked. Okay, here's one that's kind of. This one's pretty new and also a little bit scary. Yeah. Um. Who is it? Pan- Panasonic. Uh, they have released their Super Hair. Seo or Co, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Um, salon, okay. They have robot robots that take care of your hair. Wow, really? It how, will. How, how do you do feel that? about that, Don? I think that was what happened with me <laughs> a while ago, and that's why you I have that, none. People can't see it, but Don um, doesn't have as much hair. So why you'd bring that up, Bryce? Why would you Don do this? This is why I'm in radio you. because can you grade can't them, tell. Don? You I need think, to give them a grade. I think it will because yeah. that just wasn't sensitive. No, no, he just controls our paycheck. <laughs> That's all. That's it. No, so so this this does everything. Okay, this does everything. It will shampoo your hair. It will wash your hair. It will massage your scalp. It will even apply conditioner. Uh, it will do everything, and it promises not okay. to yank your hair out. Overrated. Overrated. I, well, well, I'm thinking of a on. robot, the, the sci-fi robot with these nice metal fingers, you know, that yeah. are clamps. Scrape, scrape, yeah, scrape. Just kind of ripping shreds. Let, let Don show you what okay. it's really about. Okay. Because Don and I, we're kind of from an era that was just not the golden age. That I was mean, a different era. If I were to say to you, Bryce, IBM Selectric, what would you think that would be talking about? Uh, was that? Say a vacuum. No, 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 no. IBM Selectric. The new IBM Selectric. It saves you time. Is it, uh, is it, was it one of the first personal computers? Nope. No. No. But uh, I think Rob, the producer, has, uh, has the answer. He's got a big Rob, smile on his face. It He's, is a typewriter with a little ball type There you go. Thing. The ball that switches back and forth between the various yeah, typewriters. Typewriter. We'll, was, we'll explain what a typewriter is yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How about um, if I were to say 16 millimeter films? Ah, uh, yeah. It's just film. It's just film, 16 millimeter. Yeah, but but what? When would you use a 16 millimeter film? I mean, it's not like a typical uh, kind of film. No, wasn't that what the Zapruder film was filmed in? No. no. Say I've underwater. Actually, say underwater. Oh, you would do it. Why would you film things <laughs> underwater with film? You know, go deep, 16 millimeters. <laughs> yes. Right. No, it was actually the kind of films, the film strips that they uh, used in schools when when you had a rare opportunity to watch an instructional film. Oh. See? So your, your version your version, version of the 
the big metal cart with the yeah, TV yes, on it. Yeah. Yes, was, we had no it, TV. Was the cart with the projector on it. Projector. You knew it was a good day. Like and, that. and the kid in class that could keep that machine going was always, he was guaranteed he was a good gar- grade. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He was like the principal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one more, Don, real fast. Okay, one more. Uh, let's see. Some of these are just, you know what they are, but you wouldn't believe that they existed. Like, say, well, how about this? A prince's phone. What's a prince's phone? Oh, you've got know. one of those, dude. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you little diva. I'm a little worried. Come on, Bryce. Your princess. Pick up your princess. Uh, funny enough, many homes had many princess phones. They were just in between the big old cradle handset type yeah. phone and anything else. They were kind of this. Like a curved, that curved, little curved mouthpiece. Yeah, a little. They little gold features on them. They were very 70s. Yeah, that sounds very 70s. Yeah. It looks yeah. like your cell phone, kind of, without kind of. all the technology, and it wasn't as flat. With all that, all that use. See, kids, I think this is a little blast from the past, and it tells us that you young bucks are great, you're cute and all, but <laughs> there was some technology back in the day. You heard of the printing press? I have. I you have. heard of the cotton gin? Yes. Where would you be without it? You wouldn't be wearing those clothes, my friend. Probably not. So anyway, I think the cool thing about it is we're all just people. You know what I mean? Technology advances. It comes. It goes. And we've got to use it to help each other, right? We've got to use it to build each other, not to beat each other down, even though the young bucks are still learning from us oldies. And I guess more importantly for all you listening out there, will you start taking care of your own etiquette? Will you start maybe thinking about how you're handling your own phone? Are you are you being polite? Are you Are you turning it off in the appropriate places? Are you being nice? Are you building people through your technology? Are you using it to get everyone away from you and to be alone? That's the goal of this show every day, 3 o'clock Mountain Time, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. We want to bring you new ideas and tools. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow for more fun right here on the Matt Townsend Show on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio.